Yay, welcome back. So today I'm gonna fiddle with this a bit. I'm also gonna fiddle with this. This is, if you recognize it, my old soldering station. Um, I bought this for 25 euros many years ago and it was my first own soldering iron. I bought it in a store in Germany because I thought, hey, for 25 bucks I should get a nice station. Because back in school we had soldering stations that had like a temperature controller and everything. Basically what this is in a big station and the soldering iron. Um, so I decided, hey, I want a soldering station, not just a soldering iron. So I got this without knowing anything about electronics. And yeah, let's take a look at the electronics and at what this is. So, well, yeah, soldering iron here um, with the cable coming in here. So, yeah, I bought it without knowing anything and felt reasonably well. But yeah, 25 bucks. But I mean, you know fucking China, you, you know how cheap stuff could be. And I expected to not be lied to at the age that I bought it. Which was, I don't know, maybe 17, something. Yeah, I was a bit naive about that. But yeah, so I bought it and kind of worked, but... It became apparent that the temperature thingy was just temperature equilibrium, as it is with all cheap irons. Um, but yeah, this thing is basically exactly the same as this, just in a stupid box. Actually, I trust this one more than this one, because this has a, a proper um, triac, a surface-mounted one, a bigger package, while the, t the only thing that I can find on here that is a triac is like this tiny small resistor T092 package. God dang it. Yeah. Come here. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, and why? Yeah, I, I need proper lighting for this, but I don't have it. So you get a bear with me. So you can see there is a bluish thing here. Which is the diac, I think. I think it is called a diac, but it's usually in every triac circuit. And, well, resistors and some capacitors. That's usually in every uh, circuit. I don't know what this thing does here. Um, or this. What is that? MPX.1. That seems to be a snubber network. That's an inductor. That's some kind of... Uh, yeah, well, if you can see it, inductor, trimmer cap, and the big cap to set the temperature. And yeah, you could hear the, the buzzing every time. I guess maybe this is a transform. No, that can't be. Common mode choke, maybe? I don't know. Let, let's look at the other side. Well, it is across left and right. I think I should up my camera work so coming in brown and blue this and this brown is coming up here yeah I, I don't know <laughs> but it could be a truck but it's way too thin Yeah, I don't know why this is on here, because maybe isolation, but I don't know. It doesn't make sense. There is no opto isolator on here, so... Where do I have... There I have... These are the other triax circuits I have. You see there, in the middle there's this tiny blue thing that I talked about. Then you have the triac and a pot, and some caps, which you also have somehow on here but this thing does not need a transformer or the snubber network well the snubber network is probably a requirement because this is germany and you have to keep the power net clean and i'm a fucking dick for not doing it but yeah Ch china and cheap you know but i guess that's the only reason why you could buy this in germany <laughs> but this is not worth 25 bucks like even if you let it produce in china it's just not worth it because this is basically this thing up here that I bought for fuck you for a few bucks, like maybe two or three, 
two or three bucks and this is 25. And yeah, I, as I said, I have this whole thing here. Um, okay, so I just wanted to take this apart. Also, this weight plate is in here because everything is so light. <laughs> the thing would just tip over. Actually, it never did a good job at holding the iron because you had this thing. Got that camera, show me what I see. So, you see this? You stick this in a piece of plastic back here on the other side and yeah, it just rocks itself out and falls over. So I drilled a hole in here, you can see this, where I just put a screw through this part that it held it in so it didn't fall out the whole time. So even though it was sold in Germany, I still had to fix it myself because it's a piece of crap just like this. Um, just that this was 10 bucks more, <coughs> which is kind of unreasonable <laughs> compared to all the other cheap stuff. But yeah, we're going to look at this now. Um, and what you see here is three leads soldered to the one of the transistors. Let's see what the transistor tester says. You can't see that, right? Oh my god, okay, you can see maybe there's a diode here and a diode here, but it doesn't say transistor. Which, and I tested a normal NPN transistor and it showed NPN, which made me think maybe this thing still tests positive as diodes, and because of all the circuitry outside, it doesn't, this thing doesn't check the um, transistor capabilities. So, what I'm gonna do is I will um, I will brain fart. Brain farting is great, I tell you. Um, I will try to switch this thing uh, on the breadboard like a normal transistor that you just plug in. And if it doesn't work, I know it's broken, and I'm gonna order a new one. New ones because you get ten for two bucks fifty or something. So it can break as often as it wants. Hey. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna set up the switching circuitry and I'll be back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll be back. No, I'll be right back. That's what I want to say. Well, that's the little circuit. Um, we got a 1K protection resistor for the base and we got a 1 ohm load resistor because I have hundreds of these 1 ohm resistors now and I don't know what to do with them. So I'm gonna use it as a load. So in this configuration as it's here, it should be on. It isn't. You have 2 volts and no milliamps. So yeah, and I'm sure that there's 2 volts. I measured everything with this. There's voltage on here. It's just not switching anymore. So yeah, the transistors are broken, not the thing that I replaced already. <coughs> Strangely, it seems that these broken transistors have been stuck in an on state till it exploded. Um, I don't know if I should appreciate that the people who built this used the 1 ohm resistor as a fuse. Because if there would not have been a fuse, I would clearly see which component has failed. Just by the fact that the component would have exploded. Um, <laughs> so I don't know what's... What's better, having a fuse and not having a component splatter everything inside here, or uh, not having a fuse? Wait, did I just... <laughs> God dang, my, my short-term memory is trash. Um, but yeah, transistor shot. I'm gonna test the other one too. Um, I'm not gonna show you because it's just the same, uh, same procedure. And I'm gonna order new ones, and when they're here, we're gonna replace these. And it's not gonna work again, and I'm gonna cry. No, I, <laughs> I don't know if, if it will work, but it should because it seems this transistor doesn't work. So there cannot be. Um, so there's no voltage flowing between collector and emitter in both directions, which is probably why it doesn't blow up immediately after I switch it on. Um, <coughs> but there is current flowing from the base to the both other uh, to collector and emitter like it usually should be for a transistor but as you have seen 
this one shows it's not a transistor it's just two diodes and yeah i i think i'm pretty sure i looked up the correct part and it is not a shot key diode which well wouldn't make sense because this is the base the red wire and the other two are the collector and emitter so yeah wired here like base in the middle and the other two on the outside <coughs> So I'm pretty confident that this is actually a transistor and not a Sener diode, not not Sener shot key, shot key diode, shot key diodes come in this package. Um, yeah. So you will probably see me again when I replace this or have anything other int interesting things to show, like I don't know, whatever I do with all these things back here. Maybe I'm gonna put some lipos in this. Um, this is actually like a hand. Uh, hatch trimmer as you see which doesn't work currently but that is because I took out the batteries which have leaked for quite a while and have been bloated pretty badly so I just first I tried to recharge them which worked it stored power you could drive the motor I should not walk around <coughs> so yeah but they were discharged pretty fast and yeah don't need leaking batteries that are who knows how old I think this thing was still manufactured in, in West Germany or something <laughs> no actually I think it was manufactured in, in Switzerland yeah so because <laughs> this is so Swiss this thing it's closed down you cannot change the battery you need a proprietary connector and they even had a power supply in a matching color and I don't know where I put it it should be around somewhere do you spot a yellow power supply because I don't I should have put it somewhere where the power supplies are or all these boxy thingies huh yeah I only the yellow things I can find are not the power supply but just imagine a wall ward that's yellow and has a cable in the plug in the form of this. It has actually three uh, three terminals or had because now there's nothing anymore because the the plug on the inside has rusted or corroded so badly due to the acid it just well it was gone. I just had to take it out because it was of no use anymore. All the contacts have been blackened by the years of sitting in a shed but yeah i don't know where i put the i thought i had i had kept it i must have kept it i'm not throwing things away that could still be of any use oh well yeah you're not gonna see it then it's just a yellow wall ward um but yeah next time you're gonna see me this will hopefully work again guess who's an idiot me um yeah i had this cable stuck here which doesn't make a connection you fucking idiot okay so stuck it there guess what it's passing current um so yeah we have actually like a equivalent resistance of 10 ohms and if i change emitter and collector we're still passing current <clears throat> and when we plug in the base uh, actually we'll just change a bit but yeah nothing's actually happened it's just staying at 100 milliamps which is good well kind at least it <laughs> it still means they're fucking broken <clears throat> so this one was right it's not ca um, actually calling them uh, a transistor so yeah they're broke um, I hope <laughs> um, because this this shouldn't be there shouldn't be 10 milliamps flowing at one volt uh, because at the actual voltage that they're switching at that uh, would be quite fatal <clears throat> but yeah this even though you even if there is a resistor doing this that's stupid there can't be a 10 ohm resistance over uh, base and uh, not base over collector and emitter I'm pretty sure that this is base. There's there's no looking closely there's no connection here. Nope. 
there's nothing else. No load, no current. Load. warm no it's not getting warm um yeah just checking here on camera so you can <laughs> correct me if you want if, if i'm doing anything else wrong so yeah these this is going middle this is going right this is going base which isn't doing anything right actually just well probably because i moved it don't count this is just trying to plug in the base but yeah Okay, so this is definitely shot, and the other one too. They're passing current, which would actually mean that the thing should blow up. And I don't know why it doesn't blow up. Huh. Maybe it can't get to oscillation that way, but yeah. It no worky, it good. So conclusion i'm gonna buy new uh, new transistors and gonna install them next time